everyone. Welcome back to our final daily creative challenge. My name is Jesus Ramirez. How are you guys doing today? I see that we have a full house as usual. Um, we have Bandam designer, Sam, Carlos, Sean. How's it going? Um, yeah, today is the last Photoshop daily creative challenge. Uh, my last uh, Photoshop daily creative challenge. So um, I really appreciate you having me here for the last five days. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the streams that we've done and we have one more i think that you'll enjoy it um we're gonna get right to it just because yesterday i kind of went a little over and i don't want to do that again today so before we get started i just want to show you guys um not that that's me i needed to go into the discord page the discord page is where you can upload your work the work that you've done with us um if you don't know how to get here you can go into behands.net slash challenge slash photoshop and from here you can click on chat with the community and you can also click on this chat with the community tab right here at the bottom and you have also the get starter files for today's stream here under november 1st 2019 you can click on that and that will take you to a dropbox link where you can download today's psd so um like i said let's get right to it um let me go ahead and open photoshop and from inside of Photoshop, you will see the file that we're going to be working with. I'm not a, a letterist, as you can see, but, you know, I tried my best. I um, drew this with pencil and then I went over it with a marker. And what we're going to do in today's stream is take this that I hand drew, took a picture of it with my phone, uploaded it to my computer and then shared it with you guys. Um, we're going to take this and we're going to make it into a graphic overlay it's meant to be like those handwritten type of overlays that you see on either social media thumbnails or like on a YouTube video or something like that. So that's the idea behind this stream, that you can take something that you create with your hands, digitize it, and use it as a digital asset in your um, in, in the thumbnails that you use for your social media and or videos. So let me see if there are any questions. Um, oh, I see Adobe Live is saying, heads up, we're live from Max next week and we'll not have our regularly scheduled uh, daily challenges. So that's right, Adobe Max is next week. So I'll be there, I'll be teaching, I think, four or five sessions. I'll be there, uh, I, I leave right after the stream, actually. As soon as the stream is done, I'm going to head to the airport and head down to LA since I have to start teaching tomorrow. I know that Claudie from Print My Soul will be doing some streams. I'm not sure what the lineup is, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, under the Adobe Live page. Um, but yeah, so Adobe Max next week should be very exciting. So this is the file that we're gonna work with. And what I'm gonna do first is I wanna make sure that I don't have a background on this particular um, image. So let's first worry about removing the background and then we'll worry about the type of style that we're gonna uh, use for this graphic. So first, removing the background. Very, very simple. You can go into the channels panel and just look for the channel that has the most contrast. I think that in this case, the red channel gives me the most contrast. So that's what I'll use. I'll click and drag it into the new layer icon to duplicate that channel. And I can press control I command I on the Mac to invert. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm going to use this channel as a layer mask with a layer mask black hides and white conceals. So I want, uh, I'm sorry, black hides and white reveals, white reveals. So I want to reveal the text and hide the background. And to do that, I need a black background and I need a white text. So that's why I inverted the channel. Now I can just go into image adjustment and levels to change the luminosity of this channel. So I'm going to click on this point. This is the black point. And if I drag it to the right, notice that the darker pixels become darker, which is what I want. I want to make sure that these um, dark pixels are completely black so that they're hidden. So I can drag it as far as I can to the left without distorting the rest of the image. So maybe somewhere right about here and I can click and drag this one to the left, the white point to the left to make uh, this point white. Now this is what I was referring to earlier. What type of style are we going to go for? Do we want that rough edge um, that you would get with like pencil? See that? See these shadows? So that's something that you may actually want. So you will have to des determine how far you want to push this. See that? So maybe you want just some of that texture in there and that's totally cool. So maybe you don't push this one as far left as you push the other one. So 
You can just press OK when you're done and we'll keep a little bit of that roughness. What we'll do now is press Control, Command on the Mac and click on that channel, the red copy to load it as a selection. Then we can go back into the Layers panel and from the Layers panel, all we need to do is just create a solid color fill layer and there it is. So now I can double click on this thumbnail and that brings up my color picker and you could change the color. You can make it any color that you want. Super cool stuff. Maybe we'll make it orange. I can press OK. And this can be now a graphic that we can use for our vlog. So let me just find a photo here that might work. Maybe, maybe one of these New York skyline photos might be a cool one for a vlog. So I'm just going to um, drop that in there and there it is. The effect that I want to go for is a black and white effect. So let me create a black and white adjustment layer. The black and white adjustment layer allows you to create black and white images. It completely desaturates the image and then you can control it by using either blending modes, the sliders in the properties panel or adjusting the opacity. So I'll explain the easy ones first. So adjusting the opacity, I think is very self-explanatory. You can just reduce how intense that effect is. A blending mode applies a blend to the layer depending on the blending mode that you select. If you hover over the blending modes, you can see the live preview of what that blending mode does. But the cool feature is on the sliders here. Notice that we have a lot of yellow in these buildings. You see all that yellow, there's some blue here. So I'm just pointing it out because I want you to pay attention to the yellow and to the blue. So with this layer active, watch what happens when I adjust the yellow. See how I made everything that was yellow completely dark by dragging the yellow slider to the left. And if I drag it to the right, anything that was yellow now becomes really, really bright. So you can control how dark or how bright the original colors of the image are in the black and white version. I pointed out the blue. Remember, there's some blue here uh, all throughout the image, actually, some up here, some here on the bottom. Well, when I drag the blue slider, you also have that same control. So you can fine tune the sliders to get a cool looking black and white photo. And then you can overlay your overlay your text on there. If the text is too translucent like it is here, that's because the white in the layer mask is not really white, it's more like a, a gray. So you can go back into the image adjustment levels and just make those pixels brighter and it makes the text fill in. So that's totally up to you how you want to adjust your text, but this is one way of creating a graphic out of um, hand lettering. Um, we're gonna use another uh, method for creating this. I just wanted to show you the method that used a um, layer mask so that we can have some of that texture. Um, another way of doing this um, will be to um, trace the text using the curvature pen tool. Now this could take us a while, more probably more time that we have, so I'm not gonna trace over the entire text, but if you select the curvature pen tool from the toolbar, you can just start creating just a very rough outline of what you wanna select. And just to show you how this works, I'll just go all the way around like so. So I'll probably just do, well, we'll see how far I get into this. So I'll probably just come up into this area here. And then I can come back around the other side, like so, and I'm just tracing. And it's not a perfect trace and that's okay. I'm gonna fix it in a moment. So just loosely trace your text and then with the same curvature pen tool, you can start clicking and dragging on these points to make them match your design a little bit better. And it doesn't have to match perfectly. You can take artistic liberties. So I'll try to match it as best as I can, but I won't worry too much if it's not perfect. I can always come back and fine tune it. One cool trick I like with this particular tool is if you accidentally create too many points, you can hit the uh, backspace key when you select the point and it doesn't break the path. The weird thing though, is if you select maybe like the pen tool and then you hit the delete key, notice now the path 
breaks. So that's kind of weird. I would like it if the same functionality was in all the tools, but it's not. Um, so with the curvature pen tool, I like to click on a point and just hit the delete key um, or the backspace key and it deletes that point without breaking the path. So keep that in mind because sometimes you may switch over into the direct selection tool and you may, you may be making an adjustment and then you decide that you don't like it and if you hit the backspace key or the delete key, it breaks that path. So be careful with that. I like to stick to the curvature pen tool which was new in what version of Photoshop uh, was that? Maybe somebody in the chat could remind me, but I think that was what, Photoshop 2015, I wanna say. But um, yeah, that's a really, really cool tool for making um, paths and shapes in Photoshop. So like I said, I'm just gonna click and drag and just try to get these in here. Also, if you click on a point, uh, let me find an area that would be good to show. If I come down here, where would it be? Like right here. Um, if I double click on this point, and I'll zoom in so that you can see. If I double click on this point, see how it creates that sharp edge? So that's something that you may wanna do in some cases. You click on it and it creates that sharp edge. You click on it again and it smooths out. So you can decide exactly how smooth and sharp your edges are so i don't want to take too much time with this but let me see if i have all of these selected yeah so basically what you would do is, is do what i just did with these uh, first two characters and just go all the way around and actually i was talking and explaining but i already did a you know fairly decent job so it's, as you can see it's really not that difficult um I, it looks like i really missed the curve down here so let me Try to match it just a little bit better and maybe drag this one back down like so and see i created one that i didn't really need so i'm just gonna hit the backspace key or the delete key to delete it once you have traced over your lettering what you need to do is basically do the same thing go into the um, new adjustment layer icon and select solid color and it fills in but no it doesn't fill in wait what happened well, what happened is that I didn't have the right setting in the options bar. So in the options bar, notice that I have subtract from shape selected. What I really need is combine shapes. So when I select combine shapes, uh, this happens. So now we have another issue here that we, that we definitely need to fix um, because we definitely didn't intend for this to happen. So um, let's see how we can fix this. So we can fix this by, let me see if I can select uh, these, Exclude overlapping, nope. It's gonna be one of these. Um, subtract from shape, no, subtract from shape will get us into the other one. So since this is actually just the same shape, what we're gonna to need to do is just create multiple um, shapes so that uh, this doesn't happen. Also, um, I might be able to bring it to front, so let me see if this works. Let me zoom in. I like it when things like this happen because then I have to figure it out on the, on the fly. Um, so if I have this active, let me see if bringing it to front fixes it, nope. And what if I send it to back? No, it doesn't fix it. So um, usually that's when you have multiple um, multiple shapes. So what, what I would do in this case, to be frank with you, is I probably would just um, maybe just create like another path like on top of that and then just, um, just fill it in. So I wasn't expecting for that to happen, but you know, happy little accidents happen sometimes. It looks kind of cool, but I'm not very happy with it. So, um, what I'll do is I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably just, just go ahead and just fill it in with like another shape just to cover that mistake. But yeah, I wasn't intending for that to happen. <laughs> um, but anyway, so when you are done with your design, you would just place it above your, your graphic and then you can double click on the layer thumbnail and then you can select a different color for your particular design, like so. Um, Somebody wrote, Adam wrote, looks cool with the cutout section. Yeah, Adam, it looks cool, but that's not what I was intending to do. But a happy little accident, kind of like Bob Russ with the, you know, happy little accidents and the happy little trees. Well, we had a happy little accident with the um, the vlog, you know, space there. So, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Let me see if there's any, any questions on the chat. Um, Adobe Live, Claudia will be live with us. Next week from Adobe Max, uh, yes, she will. Um, 
that's a really great thing. Um, oh yeah, Adam on on the uh, breaking the 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 path. Yeah, so you you break the path by like clicking on a point and hitting the the delete key. So and it makes a a big mess if you don't have the um, curvature pen tool selected. With the curvature pen tool, you can click on a path uh, on a point and hit the delete key, and it deletes that path. Um, yeah, so Mandy wrote regular pen tool, you just hover over the point and the minus sign show, shows up. So then click will remove without destroying the path. So yeah, what they're saying is, is with the regular pen tool, if I come in and hover over um, a, a, a point, the little minus icon shows up and I can click to delete. So yeah, that that is definitely true. Um, but with the, say the direct selection tool, that won't happen. Um, so yeah. Um, let me see. Cool. Yeah. No more questions. Awesome. So what we're going to do now is go back into the pixel based, um, selection that I made. And this is the one that I want to work on. Something that I didn't mention earlier is that you can actually use a combination of both features. So for example, I have the, um, this one that I, that I made, I have smoother lines and that may be something that you want and you might want to, um, get some nice curves going there. But what if you want to add some of that texture? So if I wanted to add some of this, uh, texture back in, you can actually do that. So let me just make this one, uh, white and this one I'll make like black or something like that. And then what I could do now is come into my uh, clipping mask with this layer active. I can press control alt G and I can create a clipping mask that will give me that texture. Obviously I will need to do a better job in the tracing cause I didn't really trace the um, path um, to match the one above. But if I were to click on the curvature pen tool, I could click and drag and then match the, the path a little bit better. And then, now I have a combination of the smooth edges and the um, texture from the actual paper and pencil and marker that I was using. So um, remember to use a clipping mask. If you want to use a combination of both, you just have to do a little better of a job um, tracing the original text just because you're not going to have a lot of flexibility. Another thing that you can do, I guess, is you could probably make um, just like a grab a piece of paper and just start drawing and just create like a big blotch of like, you know, paper texture pencil or whatever, and then take a picture of that and then, and then just drop it on top. And you won't be constrained to the actual outlines of the text because you'll just have a big block of like, you know, pencil like sketches. So um, no big deal. You can make it as big or as small as you want. So that might be an alternative. Um, we have about five minutes and the thing that I want to mention now is that since you guys have been here with me the whole week, you should create a new project and upload all the work that you've done onto Behance. And the way that you do that is you can click on create a new project and go into upload files and you can upload some of the files that you've worked with. So for example, I have this broken glass effect photo that we worked on day number two, I think it was. So this is my broken glass effect photo, day number two. I can then go into the continue button and I can just call it DCC and then you can um, put in the date or whatever you like. I'll just put my name. And I like, I actually really like how this cover preview looks, so I'm not gonna change it, but if you wanted to, you could zoom in and click and drag and adjust it accordingly. But I kinda like that, so I'm not even gonna crop it or anything. Then I'm going to click on the crop and continue button and I'm going to add on tools use. I'm going to add Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, click on done. And then under um, discoverability, I'm going to make sure that I add my keywords, PS, daily, uh, creative challenge. Is that what it is? Uh, let me go back. I forgot PS daily challenge, not creative daily challenge PS PS daily challenge. And, um, if I click on publish, then this will be a published 
um, post on my Behance. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna add all of them to them. For now, I just wanted to show you the process, uh, process and where you can add the PS Daily Challenge keyword. And when you do that, when somebody searches for that keyword, then you'll see the daily challenges. For example, see here, somebody else created a um, the broken glass effect. There's actually a couple. Uh, there's three of them here. Um, this is the water effect we did on day number three. So, oh, this is the one from yesterday. Cool. So <laughs> Marie did this really cool. It looks pretty cool. It's um, the Halloween themed um, post or stream that we did yesterday. So blood and we have some scars and the fangs. Really good job on the fangs, by the way. So yeah. And also, if you create something with us, make sure that you post it onto the Discord page. Once again, you can go into the um, Behance.net. I think I closed it. Wow. Behance.net uh, slash challenge slash Photoshop. Click on chat with the community. And uh, why am I accepting these? Oh, I should have not done that. I should have just gone straight into the Discord app because I already have the <laughs> invitation. So here I am on Discord and I can go into the current challenge page and we can see everybody's work. We Some people are still posting albums from day number one. That one looks super cool. So yeah, make sure that you come in here and share your work with us, ask us any questions. Um, so yeah, Behance, Discord, and if you share it on social media, then use the same hashtag. I use the same hashtag on my Instagram account, PS Daily Challenge. And these are some of the most recent um, posts. And you can see some of the broken glass effects, the album cover from day one, and the water challenge from day number three. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm at JR from PTC, JR from PTC on Instagram. But most importantly, if you want to keep learning Photoshop with me, you can follow me on YouTube at the Photoshop training channel. Just look for the tutorials that have the blue circle with the word PTC in it, Photoshop training channel. And then you can see all my tutorials. So I have a whole bunch. Um, so yeah, check them out. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions before I let you go. I, we have about a minute and um, while I wait for you guys to see if there's any questions, let me just say thank you so much for having me one more time here at the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges. I've had a lot of fun showing you guys some cool Photoshop tips and tricks. I hope that you guys enjoyed them. Um, I'm a little curious to know which one was your favorite out of the five, which one that you enjoy the most. Uh, let me know why. And yeah, also let me know if you have any questions. Let me just see, let me just take a look at the chat and see if there is anything that I've missed. Uh, people are talking about Halloween is, yeah. Um, Cool. Um, yeah. Have you guys been eating your candies? I don't need candy. So I used to, um, when I was a kid, I used to trick or treat, but only for the sport. I never ate the candy. I just gave it away. I, I've never liked candy. Um, you're welcome, Claire. Uh, you're welcome, Sean. You're welcome, Scott. You're welcome as well, Gerard. Awesome. Ken, Glass. Yeah, I really liked how the, the Glass um, stream came out, the, the results. I saw a lot of good work, so that's a good one. Um, you're welcome, everybody. Leah, Louis, Carrie. Julio, Stone, Rosie, thank you so much for joining me. Um, make sure that you come back. Well, first of all, you stick around for the next stream and also that you come back next week where we're gonna be live from Adobe Max. I know that there was um, a link or something posted in the chat where with the schedule for Adobe Max, but check it out. I'm sure it'll be under Behance Live. So thank you again so much for having, uh, thank you so much for having me again. I hope to see you guys again very soon. And I'll be seeing you on Discord and online. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys again very soon.